how to download and install WinSCP, and how to transfer files using SFTP in WinSCP. The first thing we need to do is download WinSCP. So I'm just going to open up my browser here and then navigate to the following URL address, which is https colon slash slash winscp.net slash eng slash index dot php. Once you're here, you'll be on the official WinSCP site. So as you can see, it says free award-winning file manager. WinSCP is a popular SFTP client and FTP client for Microsoft Windows. Copy files between a local computer and remote servers using FTP, FTPS, SCP, SFTP, WebDAV, or S3 file transfer protocols. And towards the left-hand side, you can see a Download Now green button here to download WinSCP. Simply left-click on it to be taken to the download page. At the very top here, you can see WinSCP 5.17 download, which is the most recent version of WinSCP. And you can see the latest WinSCP features and enhancements all listed right here for you to view. At the bottom of all this text, you can see the download WinSCP, the latest version of WinSCP, and the file size. Simply left click on this green button to begin the WinSCP download. As you can see guys, a new window will open, which is your file explorer here, prompting you to pick a location or destination to save your WinSCP setup.exe. As you can see, I'm currently in my downloads, which is where I'm going to be saving the WinSCP installer. I'm going to be leaving the file name as it is, and I'm going to leave the save as type as application. And all I'm going to do now guys is simply left click on save. WinSCP will then be downloaded to that location. WinSCP is a relatively small file and should be downloaded rather quickly. Once WinSCP has been downloaded, navigate to the bottom left hand corner of your browser, left click on this arrow here and then left click on show in folder. Windows will then take you to the save location of your WinSCP setup.exe. Simply double click on the setup to start the installation of WinSCP. Alright guys, as you can see the setup has started here and at the very top it says select setup install mode. Select install mode, WinSCP can be installed for all users or for only you. Install for all users which is recommended or install for only me. I'm going to be choosing the second option here, install for only me as there is only one user on this computer. Next you'll be taken to the license agreement which you can read in your own time. Once you have read it, Simply left click on accept. You'll now be taken to the setup type. What type of setup do you want? Typical installation, which is recommended, installs to default destination, installs all components, enables most typical features. Or you can go with the custom installation, which allows full selection of destination, components and features. I'm going to be going with a typical installation, which is recommended by WinSCP guys. So all I'm going to do now, once you have it selected, is left click on next. You'll now be taken to initial user settings. Please select your preferred user interface options. The first user user interface style option that you are given is the commander style, two panels, left for local directory, right for remote directory, keyboard shortcuts like in Norton Commander and other similar programs as Total Commander, Midnight Commander, drag and drop to and from both panels. The next interface style is the explorer style, only remote directory, keyboard shortcuts like in Windows File Explorer, drag and drop. I'm going to be going with the Commander interface style as that is the one I'm most familiar with and that is the one I suggest for beginners. Once you have selected your user interface style, simply left click on Next. At the very top, the WinSCP setup installer says, ready to install. Setup is now ready to begin installing WinSCP on your computer. Click install to continue with installation or click back if you want to review or change any settings. So here's all the settings that you have chosen and WinSCP setup will be installing. Once you're happy with all these settings, simply left click on install to begin the installation of WinSCP. As you can see guys, WinSCP is now installing. The installation won't take too long. And as you can see, we're greeted with a little window here which says confirm WinSCP. You have stored sessions, sites, input SSH client. Do you want to import them into WinSCP? You can import them any time later from login dialog. So guys, I have an SSH client installed on my computer called Putty and my Putty has a saved session for my remote server 
and WinSCP is asking me if I want to import that saved session into WinSCP for my convenience. Most likely you will not get this small window during the installation similar to me as you might not have Putty or another SSH client installed on your device with stored or saved sessions slash sites. So on this window here guys, I'm simply going to left click on no as I do not want to import them into WinSCP. And finally, you'll be greeted with the completion page. So as you can see, completing the WinSCP setup wizard, setup has finished installing WinSCP on the computer. The application may be launched by selecting the installed shortcuts, click finish to exit the setup. You have the option to check mark launch WinSCP here. I'm going to uncheck mark that as I would like to launch WinSCP myself. And you have the option to open getting started page, which you can check mark or uncheck mark. I'm going to uncheck mark that too. And then finally, you can left click on finish to exit the WinSCP setup here. Once you've clicked on finish, WinSCP has officially been installed on your device. So I'm just going to close out of this downloads folder here, and then I'm going to minimize my browser for the time being. And now if we look on our desktop here, you can see I have a shortcut for WinSCP. To open WinSCP, all you need to do is simply double click on the shortcut on your desktop. Once done, WinSCP will open, and as you can see, you'll be greeted with the login page to enter the details of your remote server that you would like to log into. This part of the video will show you how to transfer files using SFTP in WinSCP. So to transfer files between your local computer and your server, you're going to need to start a session and connect via the SFTP file protocol. So as you can see, under session, we have the file protocol option which we can select from. SFTP should be chosen by default. If it's not, simply left click on the arrow here and then choose SFTP. Once you've chosen SFTP, you will need the host name of your server. To get the host name of your server, you're going to need to grab the IP address. So for me, my server is hosted on Vulture. So I'm just going to open up my browser here and I'm going to go to the next tab here, which will take me into my Vultures dashboard. And as you can see, I'm currently viewing the dashboard of my Ubuntu server, which is called WinSCP Test Server. My server is located in New Jersey. The IP address is right here. The username is right here and the password is right here. The host name is going to be the IP address of your server. So all I'm going to do is simply left click on copy IP address here, and then I'm going to open back up WinSCP and paste in the IP address of my server in the host name. The port number will most likely be port 22, which is the default port. The username is going to be root, and the password, I'm just going to need to go back to my Vulture dashboard here and then simply left click on the copy password button here. Once you've got your password, simply open back up the WinSCP login page here and paste in your password. All that's left to do now, guys, is to log into your server by left clicking on the login button here. Once you've left clicked on login, guys, if you're logging into your server for the very first time remotely, you'll be greeted with this warning message from WinSCP, which says, continue connecting to an unknown server and add its host key to a cache. Of course, the server isn't unknown to me as those details are my own servers. At the bottom here, it says, if you trust this host, press yes. I trust this host, so all I'm going to do is left click on yes. You'll then be connected to your server remotely via SFTP. All right, guys, we have now connected to our server remotely via the SFTP file protocol. On the right hand side here are all the files in my Vulture server. And at the very top is the current file directory that we're in. On the left hand side here is my local computer. As you can see, this is the current directory that we're in, so we're in my documents here. Now guys, I'm going to demonstrate the process of transferring a file via SFTP to our remote server. So all I'm going to do now guys, on the left hand side, is navigate to my desktop's directory. So all I'm going to do is left click on the parent directory here, which is referred to by these two dots. So I'm just going to double click here. Once I've done that, I'm just going to double click on my desktop here to be taken to my desktop. The file that I'm going to be transferring to my server from my local computer is this file called Websplaining Logo, and it's a PNG file, meaning that it's a picture. So to copy this file across onto my server, all I'm going to need to do is simply left click on the file to be transferred, 
hold and drag it onto the right hand side here into the destination within my remote server on the right hand side here and then let go. You'll then be greeted with this little upload notification window here which says upload file websplaining logo.png to remote directory root and then you have the option to press OK or to press cancel. I'm going to go with OK as I want to transfer this file to that directory. The file that we're transferring is only 765 KB in size and therefore it's transferred very quickly. And as you can see guys on the right hand side here we have a new file called websplaining logo to PNG file, which means that our file has been copied over successfully via SFTP. You can also do this transfer process in reverse by transferring from your remote server back into your local computer in the exact same way. Instead of dragging and dropping, you can also right click on the file and copy it and then paste it in the to be transferred directory, if that's your preferred way of doing things. And with that SFTP transfer demonstration, guys, that pretty much concludes the video. If you don't have a server already and would like to have one, I'll put my referral link for Vulture's servers in the video description below. If you use this referral link, you'll get $100 free promotional credit, which you can use to test out Vulture's servers. You'll save a bit of money and I'll make a bit of money. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video on how to download and install WinSCP and how to transfer files using SFTP in WinSCP. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a like, comment down below, and most importantly of all, subscribe to support the channel. I'll see you on the next video. Is it so I to let you go?